Our videos feature voices and visuals created using AI technology, intended for adult entertainment. These depictions should not be mistaken for real celebrities. There is no endorsement, affiliation, or association with the personalities portrayed. These should be seen as nothing more than poor imitations. Viewer discretion is advised when watching this content. Titty sprinkles. Actually, hold that roll a moment. The creature has a surprise attack. The fuck? Was it trying to be stealthy? You described it being in front of us. Not exactly. However, for the sake of this part of the campaign, I have deemed this to be a surprise attack. We will roll for initiative once this part is over. The creature is charging straight at you, Swole. I need a constitution saving throw. Doesn't my danger sense use dexterity? That's correct, however, this isn't that. Depending on your result, will determine whether you can use danger sense or do anything else right now. You stand there, ready to fight this creature. Suddenly, you have vivid images of the night before flash before your eyes. The half-dragon beating you senseless and body slamming you into the ground. His foot on your back, pushing you further into the dirt. His mocking voice ringing in your ears. The trauma freezes you on the spot and you're unable to do anything as this creature goes in for an attack. It rolls with advantage, making direct contact with a natural 20 and dealing 13 damage. It then uses a bonus action to unarm strike you for a further seven. Jesus fuck, can I use my stone's endurance? I'll need another constitution save. My turn for the nat 20, baby. The initial attack was enough to snap you out of it, and you're able to use your reaction against the creature's bonus action. Roll your d12. I rolled seven, so I cancel out his unarmed strike. What is up with this Ninja Turtle knockoff, though? Yeah! And why are you rolling with purple dice instead of your usual black? What an oddly specific thing to pick up on. Well, this particular creature isn't mine. What does that mean? Bill, would you like to explain to the group? When I was last here, I, I got, got talking to the dungeon master. I told him I haven't had much experience with these games before. Most people don't include me in this type of thing. Boo-hoo, be more interesting in future. I mentioned that as, uh, as much as I'd like to take part. <laughs> I would be like the new guy in school. I didn't want to be alone on this. So I asked if I could bring someone else with me. Someone else, like another player? Yes, exactly. We both met up with the Dungeon Master during a time when the, the rest of you were off doing one of your other many campaigns. And we made our character sheets. He was meant to be here today to play it out, but I guess he got stuck in traffic or something. So the Dungeon Master is taking control of it for now. Another player is six too many to be able to handle. I've handled six before. It's not too dissimilar to five or even four for that matter. I've gone over everything with both of the new players and they do have some experience with this game. And with you all for that matter, I think I can hear someone coming over. Hey fellas, sorry I'm late. Finally, time for a bit of fucking balance. Hey George. Barack. Hi Georgie. You still got the dumbass with you then? Brock's not too bad, Georgie. He's still learning. This is going to be fun. Hi, George. Go fuck yourself, Shapiro. Whoa. Bit strong there, Georgie. What the fuck? What did I do? How about never inviting me to these type of games, huh? It's always the last three presidents, but never the Bushmeister. Hell, even you get to be a damn player in this one. I hear about these games, you know, they call them presidents play. Not presidents plus some squeaky fast talker know-it-all play. Okay, duly noted. But as a heads up, I'd keep that sort of attitude in check. If the Dungeon Master hadn't already made clear before, you get out of hand and your ass is out of here. Is that true? You're gonna spank me like I'm a naughty schoolgirl? I wouldn't put it in those words. But yes, you will be removed from here. 
should you act in a way I find inappropriate. Fair enough. Toe the line or get punished. All this talk about schoolgirls and punishment is giving me flashbacks. What kind of flashbacks? Can we not do this right now? We've got a campaign to play. You're right, Barack. DM me later, Bill. We were just getting into a fight. I was just getting into a fight. I take it this turtle ninja is yours then, golf buddy? That's right. The dungeon master helped me create the backstory and I chose a pretty awesome character. But don't get friendly with me, golf buddy. I was told if I met you in a tunnel, I'm to kick the living shit out of you. And, oh look, it's a tunnel. You're so fucked, Donnie. Barack, let's show this fucker the door. Roll initiative. Why are you attacking us? Hold on, I've got my notes here. Uh, yeah, um, I won't let you destroy my home, cultist. Wow, such passion. Cultist, we're not- Don't listen to them. Their words are nothing but lies and deceit. Quick, take them down before they kill us both. He must have fed this guy a bunch of bullshit about us. You tied this man up, took his clothes, and left him here to die. Okay, that part's true. We had good reason to hear us out. What possible reason could you have to do that to someone? That man is the cultist, not us. He and many others were attacking the town. We helped stop them, but we need this one. To be questioned, to find out their intentions, he is highly dangerous. You must believe us. How do I know they're telling the truth? Roll me an insight check. And Barack, roll me a persuasion check. Oh, wow. What are the odds? I make use of my second chronal shift. Roll again, George. Man, you're not having much luck with dice rolls, huh, Georgie? George. Barack's character wasn't able to convince yours that what they are saying is true, as far as you're aware. They are the cultists the man warned you about, and they are here to hurt him, you, and destroy everything you hold dear. I look from the little guy to the big guy and grip my quarterstaff tightly, shaking my head, I say, never. If you won't listen to reason, we'll have to take you down. I haven't got time for this. You deal with the frog. I'm going for what I came here for. I slap my hands together and rub them until sparks begin to emit and surge around my body. A sound of rumbling thunder can be heard, and I shout out, Thunder Wave! You'll need to roll a constitution saving throw for a DC of 14 to save. Well, I guess I didn't save. What happens now? You take eight thunder damage and are pushed back away from me by 10 feet. I'll then use my bonus action to cast Expeditious Retreat, allowing me to take the dash action. This lasts for 10 minutes. What does that mean? It means good luck landing a hit on me, motherfucker. I dash 50 feet to over here and away from whatever this creature is. The cultist watches as you move around the room, a slight smile on his face. He puts his hands together and utters something under his breath. You hear the words, Tiamat, guide me. When he parts them, you see flames erupt between his hands, and at the same moment, a column of fire falls from above you at high speed. Roll a dexterity saving throw. 16 must save, right? You are correct, and you're very lucky it did, for you only take half the damage. That's good. So that'll be seven fire damage, plus five radiant. Oh Whoa. my god! Balls. Was that a lot? At this stage of the campaign, yeah, that was only half. He could have taken me out in one hit. He will remain standing where he is and end his turn. Swole, you're up. I plant my feet in the ground and tense my muscles. Giving my left nipple a twist, you see a white flash in my eyes as my muscles bulge. There's a sense of heat generating from my body as I go into a rage. I twist my right nipple and roar like a bear, activating my reckless attack. I charge forward and swing my axe at the knockoff Donatello. Oh, fuck yeah. I deal 24 damage and absolutely owning you. I'll then use my remaining speed to move towards the cultist and end with my axe pointing straight at him and a wide grin across my face. As that last attack has knocked your character unconscious, George, you'll need to make a death saving throw. At last, my first good roll, so I get back up, right? Providing you get two more saves, yes. Until then, you are on the ground and can do nothing more. How close are we to all this, Dungeon Master? I will say after this round, you will have caught up to the others. Hopefully, we'll last until then. I throw my hands out and shout, Magic Missile! Directing all three of the cultists. 
Your missiles strike him one after another. He stumbles for a moment, but straightens up, his smile growing wider. Let me show you true power! I will move over here and end my turn. He raises a hand and points at the unconscious creature. By the power bestowed upon me, I heal you. A green light surrounds the creature. George, your character regained 11 HP. You are now back up. You take care of him, I'm still going for the cultist. The cultist raises a second hand and points it directly at Swolnald. Stay right where you are. Donald, roll me a wisdom saving throw. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't look good either. Swolnald, you are now paralyzed. Rooted to the spot, you cannot move or speak. You are no more than a statue within this dark and damp environment. Damn it, I've been biting aided. It is now your turn, but as stated, you can do nothing. So at the end of your turn, roll another wisdom saving throw. If successful, you will be able to move again next turn. If you fail, you will continue to remain rooted to the spot. Fuck these dice. My rage has now ended as I have not attacked anyone or taken any damage since my last turn. I've been paying attention, so now it's my turn. I run at the little guy and smack him with my quarter staff, dealing 11 damage. I'm down. I'll use my remaining speed to head back towards the big guy and end my turn. This is pretty fun. Thanks for letting me play, guys. We should be showing up now, right? Indeed. The pair of you approach from the end of the tunnel and can see the cultist with one arm outstretched. Swolnald stood still. The green creature you caught a glimpse of earlier and Bama lying face down on the ground. Bam, bam! Both of you, roll your initiative. Hang in there, guys. We'll save you. But what if they don't want to be saved? I don't like the way he said that. Brock, time for a death saving throw. You got this, buddy? Oh, fuck. You don't got this, buddy? The cultist looks at the two newcomers, then slowly back to Swole Nald. Take them down. And he closes his hand into a fist. Donald, roll me a charisma saving throw. Oh, what the fuck is this? What's your charisma like? Outside of this, excellent. People love me. In here, as bad as Biden's cognitive abilities. That doesn't look good. You feel your body loosen up and are no longer paralyzed. However, you realize you have no control over your body as if you're a puppet. Everyone's voices seem to echo and you can't make out what anyone is saying. Then you hear one very clear voice. You will do as I command. And you believe this voice to be of the highest authority. Anything it says, you will do without question or hesitation. Oh, great, really fantastic. Guys, I think I'm about to fuck you all up. The cultist steps forward and places a hand on your shoulder. A warm, glowing light pulsates from his hand and restores 11 HP. He leans in and whispers, kill them. 